we are going to be talking about one life process and that is nutrition. Now let us first classify this nutrition according to the modes. That means there are two main modes of nutrition. So let us first discuss those. So first is autotrophic mode of nutrition. And the other is heterotrophic mode. Autotrophic mode of nutrition means when the organism synthesizes its own food. So here our example is of plants. So plants synthesize their own food. They synthesize their own food. This is seen in case of plants. So such type of organisms are known as autotrophic organism and such type of mode is known as autotrophic mode of nutrition. Heterotrophic mode of nutrition means when the organism obtains its nourishment from some other organism and in this we keep the example of animals. So here our example is of animals. So animals would either get their nourishment from eating a plant or some kind of animal product like eggs or meat. So the animals are obtaining their nourishment from other living organisms whereas plants they synthesize their own food by the process of photosynthesis. So, if plants can synthesize their own food using sunlight and water in, uh, and carbon dioxide and chlorophyll, so they become autotrophs. And if we are taking nourishment from some other plant or animal, then animals become heterotrophs and the mode of nutrition is called heterotrophic. Heterotrophic mode of nutrition can further be divided into various categories. So now let us see heterotrophic mode can further be divided as holozoic mode of nutrition. Holozoic mode means when the animal eats something. So when we eat something it goes into our digestive system. It will be broken down or digested into simpler forms and then we are going to use it. So in simple words we can say here the animals eat and digest it in their body and this can be in simple organism like amoeba or it can be like us. So here our example becomes amoeba or again humans. So you, it is easier for us to understand what is holozoic. We take something in our mouth, chew it, digest it and then the simple nourishment that we get, then we break it down to obtain energy because ultimate aim is to obtain energy so that our life can be maintained. So this is called holozoic mode of nutrition. It is one type of heterotrophic mode. Next is known as saprophytic mode of nutrition. This is also a type of heterotrophic. Saprophytic mode of nourishment or taking nutrition is very different. It is seen in case of fungi. What do fungi do? A fungus would release the digestive juices outside the body. So let us take an example. Say here is some dead material. So this is dead material, some 
uh, rotting leaves or something and on this a fungus is growing. Say this is a fungal cell. So the fungus releases the digestive juices outside the body. Digestion is going to take place outside the body and the digested material will be taken or absorbed by the fungus. In case of holozoic, what was happening? We eat, digestion takes place inside our body. The digestive juices are secreted inside our stomach and intestine. Whereas here, digestion is taking place outside the body and the digested food is taken. So, how do we explain this mode which is seen in fungi? They release enzymes outside their body. Digestion takes place outside the body and digested food is absorbed. This type of mode is known as saprophytic mode. So, here we have fungus. Now, fungus is a group. So, we can write down example of any fungus like rhizopus. Rhizopus is commonly known as bread mold. Fungi or fungi are normally called molds. Many times we see that if a piece of bread is you know left uh, outside for a longer period of time then a thread like fungus grows on it that is rhizopus commonly known as bread mold so it releases the enzyme on that piece of bread digestion takes place on the bread and then the digested material is absorbed the third type of heterotrophic mode of nutrition is known as parasitic mode In parasitic mode, the organism obtains its nourishment from the host. So, here there are two organisms. One is a parasite and the other is the host. So, parasite obtains its nourishment from the body of the host but they take care that the host doesn't die because if the host dies these parasites will have to look for another host so we say it is without killing them without killing them so parasite lives in the body of the host without killing the host so that they can keep taking the nourishment from the host's body now, these parasites can be of two types. They can be ectoparasites or endoparasites. So, we are talking about two types of parasites here. Ectoparasites and endoparasites. Ectoparasite means the parasite lives on the body of the host. Parasite lives on the body of the host, not inside the body. An endoparasite means the parasite lives in the body of the host. One, one example of ectoparasite is leech. Leech gets attached to the body of animals and keeps sucking the, uh, the blood. So, blood is the food of this animal. So, leech becomes a parasite and suppose it is attached to the body of a cow. So, cow becomes the host. In case of this, we can take the example of tapeworm. So, tapeworm is the pest and it, uh, it is a parasite and it lives 
in our body, inside our body. So here the host can be any other animal like cow and here the host can be human. So if the parasite lives inside the body of the host, we will call it endoparasite. And if they live on the body of the host, then we call them ectoparasites. There is one more important example and that comes from the plants. There is a plant which is known as cascuta. It is a parasitic plant and it grows on the other plants and it obtains water, food, everything from the other plant. So cascuta is a parasitic plant and leech is an ectoparasite. You must have also seen that uh, on the body, on the fur of these animals like dogs and cats, there are small insects which are called ticks, mites, and they keep sucking the blood from their body. So these ticks and mites, they become the ectoparasite and the dogs and the cats, they are the hosts. And endoparasites are many, like many disease causing. Malarial parasite. The parasite which causes malaria, it lives in our body. So it is an endoparasite. So we can write one more example here. That is malarial parasite. Its name is plasmodium. You will study this in higher classes. The details about plas uh, plasmo plasmodium, which is a malarial parasite. So these three, holozoic nutrition, saprophytic nutrition and parasitic mode. These are three different types of heterotrophic. Now, what was our heterotrophic mode of nutrition? That the organism or the animal obtains nourishment from some other organism. Here, we are eating something, maybe a plant part, maybe an animal part. Here, the fungus obtains its nourishment from maybe bread, or dead leaves or maybe a log of wood. Here the parasite obtains nourishment from the body of the other animal or other plant. So when the nourishment is obtained from some other organism, it is heterotrophic. Animals cannot synthesize their own food. This is heterotrophic. Modes can be different. And autotrophic means when a plant can synthesize its own food by using carbon dioxide, water, in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. The process is known as photosynthesis. By process of photosynthesis. So this is how we classify the nutrition process into different categories. We call them modes of nutrition. Now in the next part, we are going to take Various modes seen in animals, like how amoeba takes its nutrition, how paramecium takes its nutrition, and then how humans obtain their nutrition. And then we will come to how plants synthesize their own food.